Hey guys, so here we are today. We are much like y'all. We are self-quarantining. We are social distancing. Courtney is home from college today, and so we decided we're going to do a little experiment. We're going to play around with a uh, venison wellington. Actually, a sous vide venison wellington that I did for Valentine's Day about a year and a half ago for my lovely bride. But anyway, we had a leftover piece of, uh, of venison backstrap uh, from a meal that we had earlier in the week. And keeping in mind that we couldn't find all of the ingredients that we need. We couldn't find the prosciutto. Um, we do have some mushrooms. We have some onions, garlic. I'm gonna put a little bit of breadcrumbs in there. Um, we've got the uh, venison itself, just the venison backstrap. And what I did is I put this in the sous vide, uh, actually yesterday at 125 degrees so that it would be uh, partially cooked rare before we even uh, start the process. And then took it out of the sous vide, put it in the refrigerator, let it cool down. And then what we're gonna do right now is we're actually gonna sear that. So Courtney's gonna turn uh, our stove on and we're gonna sear this on all sides of it. Just a real quick sear, just to turn it around. What I did is we don't have the prosciutto ham, and so what I did is I took uh, just some bacon and I laid it out and pre-cooked it in the oven. Probably crisped it up a little <laughs> more than what I had intended to, uh, but that's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna roll with it. So I've got some of that bacon grease, and we're gonna brown this venison in that bacon grease. Courtney's gonna take that back strap and just put it right in there and let it hear that sizzle. We're gonna just kind of keep it on there until it starts to brown up. Um, and then we're gonna rotate it, make sure that we get all, every side and then each of the ends of that. Here, right there on the bottom side of it. So we, want, we want that colorization, that caramelization on all parts of that back strap. And once you've got it caramelized on all the sides, Courtney's going to take the, uh, we're just going to put it on a cooling rack and we're going to let that cool down a little bit. Turn the fire off on our stove there. Okay, so now we poured off our excess bacon grease, and we're going to let that we're going to let that venison just kind of sit there and rest. And we're actually going to put it in the refrigerator here in just a minute. But first thing we want to do before we do that is we want to get this mushroom mixture and this what they call a duck cell going. And so we're going to put this. On. This is just really finely chopped mushrooms. So we're going to put that directly in the pan. There's actually nothing else in it. We're going to add a little bit of salt. But what we want to do is we want to get that on that fire to get that. Uh, moisture content out of it. You can actually hear it sizzling. So we're going to take a spatula and just kind of spread that around it like that. Or you can add some salt to it. I'm also going to put just a little bit of this uh, garlic in there. Kind of mix that around. Just real fine minced garlic. And what we're trying to do is get the moisture out of this, out of those mushrooms, so the high moisture content in your mushrooms. So we just want to get that out. All right, so we've just about got all the moisture out of there. And just to make sure that we do, Courtney's going to put just a little bit of breadcrumbs, just sprinkle a little bit of that on there, and that's going to absorb a little bit more of that moisture and then kind of make a little bit of a binder into it. These are Italian breadcrumbs, so it's also going to add a little bit of flavor to it. So that's probably all that we need right there. So we're going to go ahead and take that out and put it back in the original bowl that we had. We're going to let that cool and then we'll start an assembly here in just a minute. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and sweat some onions kind of on a low medium heat. And uh, Courtney, we reach up in there and get some of that olive oil or that vegetable oil out of there just to just squeeze a little bit in there. And then we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to that. See that's we're gonna let that cool and that's kind of making a nice little nice little paste right there. All right, so what we're gonna do now is Courtney's got the we're gonna brush a little bit of mustard on there and just apply a little bit of a base. So just a little thin, brush it around on there. It's fine, just go ahead and uh, start brushing that up. We're gonna paint the whole thing with a little bit of yellow mustard. All right, so now we're gonna take everything and we're gonna kind of do the assembly phase here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this kind of out of the way. And 
we're going to take some plastic wrap that we've got right here and we're going to pull it out and spread it out over a cutting board. A good sheet of plastic wrap. What we're going to do is we're going to take <clears throat> that bacon and we're going to try to keep it, normally we would use a prosciutto, but we're going to take that bacon and we're going to try to keep it together. It's probably a little more crispy than what we had intended and we're going to see if we can use that to roll our back strap into. So we're going to take that and just transfer it over to the plastic wrap. We're going to stay with this one. We're just going to, we're going to lean it a little bit. So we're going to, we're going to do one other thing. So we're going to take that plastic wrap. We're going to pull it up a little bit. It looks like our bacon's a little too crispy. So Courtney's going to take the cheese that we got out there. Ordinarily, we wouldn't put a cheese on this, but we're going to see if it works the way we've got it. And we're just going to lay that cheese out that we're going to use. And we're going to take our mushroom duck cell and we're going to just spread that with a back of the uh, tongs. We're going to spread that as evenly as we can across the cheese. We're going to lay our bacon across that. Again, it's not as pliable as we had intended, but we're going to see if we can make it work. If not, it'll just crumble up around that uh, back strap. And hopefully, make it nice and tasty and good. Can't go wrong with bacon. All right, so now we're going to take our back strap and we're going to put it right at the edge of that. There you go. And then we're going to roll up our, we're going to take the uh, cling wrap and we're going to see if we can just kind of roll it all in here like this. As tight as we can. Come up. Okay, and we're going to just let the cling wrap do the rest of it. Roll it tightly in, we're going to take that out. Okay, so we got a little bit of a gap here, but we're going to go with it. That's what we've got. Self-quarantine edition. Self-quarantine edition. Right, so we're going to roll it up as tight as we can on the ends. I'm actually going to just stick this in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. So now Courtney's going to pull the back strap from the refrigerator, uh, it's firmed up a little bit. She's going to unroll that and we're going to put it right at the edge of the puff pastry. She took the puff pastry and washed the edges with an egg wash so that she can stick it all together. And lifting the edges of this saran wrap. She's going to kind of roll that up really tightly as she can. Put up on the plastic wrap and it should roll and release as you go. There you go. There you go. Just keep going. And I'll try to, now you can start trying to roll it really tight in there. Take a paring knife. We're going to kind of cut the edges off. You know, we want to be able to seal that around on the edges. Sorry about that, we had visitors that came to visit. So what we did is we took the, uh, the Wellington and we rolled it in the puff pastry and then we rolled it up in the saran wrap, the, the uh, plastic wrap, really, really tight so that we could shape it. And this has probably been in the refrigerator now for about 30 or 45 minutes. So Courtney's gonna go ahead and take it out, unwrap it, unroll it. We took the edges of the puff pastry She's going to make just little decorations on it, across it. All right, and then what she's going to do is she's going to take her, uh, the egg and just wash over the whole thing. Just paint the whole thing with egg, the egg wash.
Okay. And she's going to take the paring knife and just kind of score it. So she's just going a little bit through. We're gonna, that's going to allow some of the steam and a little bit there you go. And we're just going to kind of score in between. Just allow a little bit of that steam to escape. She's going to transfer it over to a baking pan. And you've got the, let's bring the baking pan to it. And then we've got the, uh, we've got the oven preheating to 400 degrees. And we've got the convection on. So it's going to put it in the oven. And we're going to bake it probably for about 20 minutes. We're going to kind of keep an eye on it and just until the, uh, the puff pastry is a nice golden brown. Remember, we already cooked that venison in the sous vide. So all we have to do is get the uh, puff pastry to where we want it. So once we have that in place, we will be back and show you the final product. So now Courtney's going to take it out of the oven. Nice golden brown. We're going to let it rest for five or ten minutes while the asparagus finishes cooking. So we've let it rest for just a few minutes. You want to make sure you let it rest long enough because if those juices spill out of there, they're going to um, get that crust all soggy. And you can see we got a little nice, nice solid crust on there. We're going to slice it right down the middle. We've got a beautiful Wellington there. There we have it. Our Wellington is done. Very fine job, Courtney. All right, so thank you all for joining us. We're going to go ahead and get this sliced up and plated. Mama's hungry. So we're going to go ahead and get everybody fed. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you all in the next one.